Sunrise Interviews is brought to you by Valley Strong Credit Union. Welcome back. First responders spend their entire careers being part of people's worst days, and that can take a debilitating toll over the years. Year after year, studies show that more first responders die of suicide than in the line of duty. In 2018, Kern County Fire Captain Derek Robinson shared his struggle with job-induced PTSI, or a post-traumatic stress injury. He spoke out here on 17 News and in a poignant Facebook post after 17 years on the job and witnessing countless tragedies to break the stigma of sharing the effects of the job on your emotional health. And now he's taken that message and put it in the pages of a new book, Continue, Surviving the Darkness, Choosing to Live. And he's joining us this morning to talk more about that book available now. Captain Derek Robinson, thanks so much for being with us this morning. It's great to see you. Good morning, Maddie. Thanks for having me on. What does it mean to you to have this book out there now available to anyone who wants to read it? Well, it was, uh, it was really... Uh, a push to get the book out, but also make it the best uh, possible version. So there was kind of a delicate balance trying to get published uh, because as we were getting closer, you know, there were a couple of uh, firefighters that chose suicide and it just, it really struck a chord and uh, kind of hurt deep inside because could this book have uh, made an impact or potentially help that person make a better choice? And you've heard so many people, friends, colleagues, and then, you know, people who are also first responders from far away reach out to you since you started speaking out about this a few years ago. Uh, what's it like hearing from people saying, thank you for speaking up. I, I never felt like I could before, but maybe now I can get help. Oh, it's, it, you know, it's a great feeling just knowing that you're uh, making a difference and making the impact that you're uh, try, trying to achieve or um, you know something that you're after and, and just being able to have a positive impact in uh, changing a uh, mindset or a stigma that is long since passed needs to go away what has recovery been like for you since you first acknowledged that this was something in your life uh it, it took some it took uh it, there was an immediate impact from the first uh, session with my clinician uh there was a huge weight lifted but it was still a work in progress and i still touch in with her uh touch base with her probably once a month at least just to make sure that you know i'm not uh heading off the, in the wrong direction or you know uh any issues popping up but uh you know it's been it's been great i mean life has been so much better and i've found myself in this post-traumatic growth where i just feel like each day I'm becoming the best version of myself as I continue to uh, read and, and learn new things, whether it's, you know, um, related to the, the injury or just personal growth. It's just been a, uh, it's really been a fantastic journey. And I know calling it an injury is important to you because it's important to, um, you have said before, recognize that this is something that's treatable and that's why it's important to talk about it because you can get help. Exactly, yeah. I think people have a tendency to shy away from asking for help uh, when you call it a disorder because then it seems like maybe it's uh, a sentence to a condition for the rest of your life, which is not in fact the case. It is very treatable as, as an injury, as same as a uh, shoulder or knee or any other injury you might suffer on the job. And all you have to do is ask for help. And the job doesn't change, obviously. I mean, this is always going to be a part of your job, dealing with people's tragedies. What is able, what are you able to change so that, you know, you can handle it and you can move on and continue to thrive in your career and your life? Yeah, for me, it's really been about, um, you know, for all those years, I was really suppressing those emotions, whether it's compassion, empathy, anything like that. And so allowing myself to have those feelings and deal with them and recognize them and not suppress them to a uh, point where they boil over has been very important in my recovery and uh, continue to do the job day to day. All right, Derek, where can people find your book? Uh, the book is uh, live on Amazon in both paperback and ebook versions. And then I have an Instagram and Facebook page with the links on there. So you can go to Continue by Derek Robinson on either of those. And there's a link there that you can click on and get to the book. And there are a lot of resources that you talk about in your book. Uh, there are a lot of resources out there, including a, a local retreat for first responders uh, that can be a place of, of growth and healing. So we encourage you to reach out to that. We also have on our screen the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, which is also always a resource. Captain Derek Robinson, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for sharing your journey with us through the years and, and for putting this out there for everyone else to help.
Thank you, Maddie. I appreciate your uh, advocacy on this uh, issue uh, going forward and in the past as well. And I can't wait to read your book. All right. Thanks, Derek. We'll be right back. Thank you. Uh,